Hi, my name is Atticus, host and DJ, Friday mornings 1 to 5 a.m. on KEXP. Join today for a special edition of Live on KEXP at Home with Caroline Rose. Hello. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. I just came back from a, a swimming adventure. <laughs> That's so exciting. I'm, I'm like still a little um, soaking wet, but... yeah. That's good. That's uh, good that you're able to get outside right now because <laughs> I spend so much time inside now. Uh, speaking know. of that, uh, I've been really looking forward to having you on KEXP for a long time now. And I was really hoping to have you in the studio in May uh, when you're supposed to be in Seattle. And of course, that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, but we have the closest thing to, uh, to you in the studio right now. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that is beautiful. Yeah, I, uh, oh. the label sent a standee of you, so it's like we're in the same room now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love that so much. I'm so glad that they're getting some use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, sweet. Well, thanks again for uh, joining us. And I know you're going to play a couple songs from the new record, uh, Superstar. Uh, do you want to take it away? Sure, let's do it. Concentrate with you there looking at me I can't seem to get a single thing done today I, I don't want this feeling to ever go away I, I want to climb inside you every single day Is it the end of baby or is it just the beginning? 
with myself it's so romantic I see I'm staring as I walk down the line I'm looking good I don't think it's a crime but everybody's so quick to stand up and say you gotta be this way or that way gotta ask yourself is this really what I wanted everybody's so quick to cry out and say you gotta keep yourself together well baby watch me freak out There's only so much that a person can take Too much abuse and somebody you break I took a pill and I hopped on a plane And I'm never looking back again Cause I am on a strike against my body and mind What once was pain is now pleasure of mine Everybody's so quick to cry out and say you gotta try to stay together Gotta ask yourself, is this really what I wanted? Everybody's so quick to sit you down Baby, watch me break down Feel the way I want to Feel the way I want to Feel the way I want to Feel Feel the way I want to Feel the way I want to Feel the way I want to Feel Break it down now Back here with Caroline Rose. That was Feel the Way I Want from the uh, latest release, Superstar. Came out on March 6th on New West Records. And right before that was Do You Think Will Last Forever. Thanks for putting both of those videos together for us. Uh, They're both very, very good. And obviously show your personality quite well as well. That's my, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite things about your music and your live shows is that you're, uh, you have such an amazing personality and you're so much fun uh, to listen to and to watch on stage. Is it weird to like have to sit at home and make pre-recorded videos and like how do you get into that how do you uh what, well, what's your like process for that you caught me at a good time because i'm just now starting to enjoy playing these songs again it was a while i needed to really take a break because yeah. i i was really at my wits end when when the pandemic hit i just was losing my mind yeah com completely i it, i was not in a good place so, so was, yeah <laughs> So is it almost good that you didn't have to tour and play these songs every single night? You got to take a little oh, bit of a break or? I, let me tell you, I really thought I was cursed. I thought Superstar had cursed me and <laughs> everything went wrong. Like with this record, I, it was like, cause the whole thing started as this big experiment, you know, cause I had this little tiny shoebox of a house and I, it was the first time that I had ever built a studio in my house and I, I, I got a two bedroom in Austin and it was like 600 square feet. It's like tiny. 
um, and I found this crazy deal on it and I was like, I'm going to make a studio in one of the bedrooms. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool to just like see what, how big of like a big pop record I could make like in this tiny little shack of a room. And it just turned into this big experiment to just like see what I could do with this and see if we, I could like create a champagne year for us with this record. And that was the goal was like my, my team, my band, we all do this for like no money. Everybody was just huffing it on the road. We played so many shows in 2018 and 2019. And I was just like, I, I want to get us to a place where we can pay our rent comfortably. (laughs) And that was the whole goal is to just like kind of create this thing out of nothing. Um, and boy, did it really backfire. I have never seen quite an er eruption like what happened. (laughs) Yeah, it's been an absolutely crazy year. And especially, I mean, like we said, this record came out on March 6th. And then immediately, like a week after is when Seattle shut down. I, my birthday is March 5th. So I remember that, like I had a birthday party Aww. planned for the weekend after and then had to cancel everything because everything shut down. So, I mean, yeah, it's uh, it just hit right at the very perfect time. Um, Not so. Yeah, it's been an absolutely crazy year. But uh, I'm happy that we get to have you here, at least, that we're able to, like, figure out. I was thinking about this earlier. Like, it's crazy that, you know, obviously there's a pandemic that happened 100 years ago, too. But that this happened in 2020 and not, like, 1980. Like, can you imagine (laughs) trying to, like, talk to your friends in 1980 or trying to see family or trying to, like, perform as an artist? And I don't know. I feel like we're sort of lucky that we got to have this in 2020. Yeah, I mean, well, Lucky's AIDS, not the right AIDS word happened either, in the but. 80s, so that there was a pandemic, but... You're right, yeah. Not like this, yeah. Yeah, uh, at least uh, not everybody had to stay home at all times. And, but Yeah, yeah. I, it's crazy. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I've, I feel like I've been finding ways to adapt, and that's been... I've been trying to find silver linings this whole time, and I think I've been finding them, so I'm just trying to kind of stay afloat and be a source of light for people. That's awesome. What have you been uh, trying to do in uh, quarantine while you've been hanging out at home? What's been keeping you busy? Honestly, I've completely transformed my life, if I'm going to be honest. I I, I was just in a really dark place. Um, it, that kind of started right when I finished this record this time last year. It just sent me into a spiral because I had been working on it so much. I worked on it like every day for a year straight. Um, between writing the songs and touring. And then um, I'd bring my gear on tour and work on it on tour. I mean, I I really went for it. And I've never worked so hard at anything in my whole life. And um, yeah, I think after that happened, I just like kind of lost myself. It's like I didn't know who I was when I wasn't working. And I like my confidence plummeted. It really affected my relationship was which was like the most important relationship I've ever had. And that, that fell apart. It, I mean, I'm telling you, my whole world has fallen apart. <laughs> and I, ha- I have been rebuilding it. So I've, you know, I, I started really looking, this sounds really woo-woo, but I've like been completely turned inward on everything. Just every fear that I've ever had, I've been facing. And all my anxiety, the way I, I react to really stressful and important things in my life. I I'm trying to be a better person and a better partner and a better friend. And I'm using this time really, I think to my benefit because who knows when I'll have this much time again. And I'm just yeah. re- refining a part of myself that I think had been lying dormant for a long time. That's really, really awesome. I know uh, it, it's so important when you're, when you're touring it, it's, there's a whole release cycle, right? So you work so hard on writing this record and then producing this record and then you put it out and then you're on the road and then you're just constantly on the road and driving and staying in weird places and not seeing friends and all this stuff and it's really really taxing and then you get back home and you have to start on the next record again and then you do the same process over again so it's so important that to like find time for yourself and actually like you said look inward at yourself and really work on things so like it's so unfortunate that we weren't able to tour and weren't able to see you here in Seattle on this tour but I'm also really excited and happy that you were able to like learn things and like work on yourself. I don't know. That's really, uh, that's exciting. 
Yeah. I think it's a huge thing. And I think a lot of artists take that for granted because they're just so busy and constantly trying to write records and tour and do the whole thing. And yeah. It's not just artists. It's everybody. We're all so busy. Yeah. So, you know, they're, it's hard out there. <laughs> yeah. It's been weird. I'm so used to working so much that I don't get very much sleep. And now I like don't go out and I don't have a commute and I've like been getting eight hours of sleep every night and it's crazy what it will do for you. It's like, yeah. There's, you know, there's something wrong when we're not sleeping or eating because we're working so much. Yeah. You know, exactly. Um, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, should we get into the next two songs, which are both from your last release, a uh, loner, which came out in 2018 uh, and you put together a couple videos, one for more of the same and to die today. So I think we're going to watch both of those. I'm 
hits the ground I'm gonna know what it feels like to drown My lungs fill up and make Like the liquid of a cloud Soft as the water when it hits the night air I'm gonna burn your party to the ground Along with all my memories of you Before they fade out live with caroline rose who put out a great record back in march called superstar on new west and both those songs were from the 2018 release loner uh what made you chose choose those two songs to uh, perform today um that's a good question i i think i was just feeling them i don't know i they sound I, so good with the, uh, with the solo performance i yeah Sounds yeah, very, very good. it's also really it's difficult to choose songs to do solo um, because some just really sound so much better with a band. Um, <laughs> but I but I think that's the the 
essence of a good song is if you can strip it down and it's still entertaining. Um, and to die today, especially is one of those songs that I've always, um, wanted to play solo because I've always believed in that song so much just lyrically. I think it's beautiful and, um, it really makes me feel a lot when I play it. Uh, and I've just been going through it. So I, (laughs) I think a lot of people, kind of will probably relate to that song right now it's just heavy totally i was gonna say they both uh especially that song fit the mood very well for today and mm-hmm. it uh they just both sound very very good solo and uh, it's nice to hear different renditions of them uh, i'm, I'm of, glad yeah yeah it's part of the reason i love doing these like live sessions or the live at home sessions is because you get different versions of things which is really cool that's true yeah uh so i saw not too long ago you've been working on a red honda motorcycle that you called Rhonda. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get started doing that? Rhonda the Honda. Yeah. Um, well, um, I, it, I got this motorcycle from my fake uncle, my Funkle Randy. <laughs> he gave it to me for $1. I forgot to wow. give him, I forgot to give him the dollar. I still owe him the dollar, but, um, yeah, it wasn't running. It wouldn't even start. And I was like, well, I have all this time. And I was up in Vermont for the summer um, just kind of like getting over a breakup and just getting out of town for a bit. Um, and I, yeah, I, my friend offered a garage and was like, if you want to work on it here, you totally can. And I was like, okay, I've got a manual and YouTube, so I might as well just try and do this. I've always wanted to try. Um, and yeah, and a friend of mine, he's also kind of a motorcycle enthusiast, DIY kind of person. And he, uh, yeah, he he coached me through a couple of things that I couldn't learn from a manual. Um I got it started and it runs. I'm actually what's it's I I had to laugh cuz I got I took it to a shop just to make sure that I had done everything like, you know, before I start really riding it around. I I yeah. want to make sure it's like really road ready and safe. Yeah. And I brought it to a shop and they had called me earlier and they were like, "Okay, it's all ready and and I was like, oh, wow, that was so fast. And they were like, yeah, it's in really good shape. And he's like, oh, I, there's one more thing. Did you want me to do this? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. You could do that. And then he never called me back again. And so I wasn't sure if it was done, if he had like gotten around to doing it. And he just called me like right before this interview started. And he's like, hey, are you are you picking up the bike? Because like the shop is totally full and like I really need you to come get it. And I'm like, oh, sorry, <laughs> my bad. Uh, you're going to have to wait because I am on the other side of town now. So it's <laughs> but it's road ready. I'm so ready to rip through the desert. I can't wait. That's so awesome. I love motorcycles. And when I saw you posting that, it made me really, really happy. Um, have you ridden motorcycles before? Like this, was this something that you wanted to do or did it just like kind of happen? Um, well, I got my license, uh, years ago and probably like four years ago now. And, um, yeah. And I'd always meant to pick up this bike, but it was in Rhode Island and I've just, my lifestyle is very, I travel a lot. Um, and I also now live in Texas, so I live very far away from Rhode Island and I just could never pick it up. Like I was just never in a place where I'm like, oh yeah, I have plenty of room in the van to put a motorcycle in the back. Yeah. Um, and so it just, I knew how to ride, but I, I haven't, I just didn't have a bike to ride. So I finally, <laughs> I'm just so happy. That's so uh, exciting. Do you have like a dream spot that you want to take it? Like your first trip, do you have a like, do you want to go on a road trip with it? And where do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, Atticus, you know I got a, a, a dang trip in mind. You're going to have to beef that out, my bad. Uh, um, yeah, I'm taking it out to West Texas. That it's, I've been, West Texas, I've had this fascination with the desert forever. Uh, I mean, all deserts, I, I think I, I'm just drawn to them because it draws weirdos out there. Totally. Yeah, like you sit extreme. out in the sun all day long and uh, you're, does some things to you. <laughs> yeah, let your brain cook and just fry like an egg. But yeah. I, I, I've want, I've gone out there for probably like six or seven years in a row, um, just because I love it so much. I always find time to go out there, and I have wanted to rip a motorcycle through the desert for so long. Probably since I saw that Steve McQueen movie where he was like 
just tearing it up in his little white suit and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The Great Escape or whatever. Yeah, there it's you called. go. The Great Escape. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just. I'm like, man. I want to like flat top, just rip it. So I can't wait. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I yeah. love the desert so much, and I love the like the quietness of the desert too. When you go out there, and you just you feel like you're like really alone for a little bit. Like not a, not alone in a bad way, but like. No, you're by yourself and it's very contemplative. And uh, Yeah, I also, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm I'm not to cut you off, but I get no, really excited. Yeah. I'm like, oh, but also <laughs> yeah. um, there there's so much biodiversity out there, uh, especially this time yeah. of year. Um, West Texas is amazing to visit in the fall because it, there's all the wildflowers are in bloom. And if you, you know, stay really still, you can see so many animals and the butterflies migrate through here on their way South. Um, a lot of them stay in Texas, but some fly further South to Mexico monarchs do. Um, and you can see so many butterflies and I'm learning all about the wildflowers. So I got all these like books and stuff and so it's, I don't just want to rip my motorcycle. I also want to go, <laughs> go camping and hiking and just be, um, have some alone time with my, just my mind and learning to love my mind, not think it's, um, a prison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I totally get that. Um, it's been interesting right now during like quarantine. I think everybody's taken all these road trips and at the beginning I bought a, the opposite of a motorcycle. I bought a Subaru Outback. Uh, hey, because I really cool wanted, too. yeah, I love it. Uh, but I really wanted to go hike, or hiking and camping in Washington and the Northwest and everything. So that's been really nice to like get out and be able to go camping and like go to different places with my super. I think so. that's a, that's a great car to have because it's a hatchback, right? It's yeah, kind of, yeah. Is that a hatchback? It's a Did, wagon. I think it's a wagon technically. Okay, but okay. Like, well, you can open up the back. Yeah, exactly. You just yeah. need to get one of those mosquito nets because you can open up the back and then have, you know, you can see the stars and stuff and then you just get that a mosquito That sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. I went and I stayed in Yellowstone uh, in July in the Grand Teton National Forest and I remember sleeping in the back of my car and you can kind of see outside a little bit and I woke up in the middle of the night and I looked out and I could see the Neowise Comet. And it was like, it blew my mind because I was like, what is that in the sky? Is that the moon? I have no idea. And then I realized it was a comet going by and it was... That's so cool. Yeah, it was just this beautiful moment, like in the forest, nothing around you and this comet in the middle of the night. I so. love that. I love I love hearing people's stories of like reconnecting with nature and the cosmos. Yeah, it was really, really nice. Um, also, I know you're a October baby, mm -hmm. uh, born in October. Um, do you like Halloween very much? Yeah, is Halloween <laughs> happening this year? What's going that's, on? So that's know. what that's what I'm getting to. Is I was gonna say, are you dressing up? Do you want to dress up? Because I have a lot of friends who are still gonna dress up, but like just for Instagram, which I guess is fine. But <laughs> I, I miss like going to parties and dressing up and doing things. So, well, <laughs> you know, I like to dress up. I, I mm -hmm. love dressing up. This is like I'm a theater nerd. I'm always look like, gonna love dressing up. Um. I don't know what I'm going to be yet, though. I have to really think about this. Okay. I usually have ideas like months in advance. And this year, because I was just like, there's got not going to be a Halloween, <laughs> I kind of failed myself and didn't think of anything good. So There's still time. There's still plenty of time. Yeah. yeah. And I can hang out by myself <laughs> and with my roommates, I guess. Yeah. 2020. And, uh, a, yeah. 2020 Halloween with your roommates. 2020 is the year for loners. This is like our year. Man, it's <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> uh, I've seen you've been posting some different books that you've been reading as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know, or, like, do you want to share any books with anybody that you've been reading that you think are important that, or that are just really good that people should read? Oh I, man, that's something I've been. I feel like I fell off reading because I was just so busy all the time, and since I've been at home a lot more, I've been really trying to like sit down and read a lot more books. Um, I think a lot of people are as well. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, I barely read a book when I was working on Superstar. I think I read one book, honestly. It's so sad. And I love books. I'm like an avid reader. Yeah. And you know something's not right when an avid reader has no time to read. Like, uh, yeah, I... Although the one book that I did read was amazing. I, I think I read what, more than one book. But What was the one book that you read that was amazing during Superstar? Um, a Donna Haraway book called Staying with the Trouble. It's yeah. 
she's a real brilliant mind. Um, she wrote another book called the cyborg manifesto that, uh, she, she's just a brilliant person. Uh, highly recommend her work. It's a lot of like ecological based. I read a lot of ecology books and like okay. kind of, it's very, it's like cerebral kind of sh- stuff. Um, <laughs> nice catch there. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I read this book called braiding sweetgrass, which was life changing. Um, Sweet. another book called, uh, the body keeps the score about trauma. That's been really life-changing too, just addressing my own trauma and how it's affected my life and how it's affected my psyche and how I react to things. So, um, oh man, I'm reading the the Tao Te Ching right now and Mm -hmm. that's also, I'm into a lot of woo-woo stuff right now. (laughs) I mean, that's cool Um, though too because I feel like in 2020, so many people just get their information from like Instagram memes or headlines yeah. and i love like diving into a book and you realize th- how much information is out there and how much that like you're not seeing and so it's always fun to like completely dive into a book and read about all this stuff that you never knew about yeah i've been actually laying off the social media too because i realized it's poison for my mind oh i've been yeah i deleted my facebook uh and Good my twitter you. thank you yeah um or at least i should say i deleted them off my phone i didn't Fully delete them. So it's not, I don't know if that counts really, but. That's uh, funny. Yeah. At least they don't sit it on the couch. It counts for and, something. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't scroll through them anymore. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, I was really excited to have you in the studio and because you have such a great um, stage presence and set always. You travel with like a bunch of things to put on the stage, which I think <laughs> yeah. is always great. Uh, do you pick things up as you go around or do you just like, do you find things and you leave home and, and just make a stage set? <laughs> I am always looking for stuff. I'm always okay. sourcing things. Um, with Superstar, it was a little different because I had a whole thing planned. I mean, we had a whole thing. There was going to be a light show that I helped design. You know, I got these little like laser light things and I was doing all these color combination things um, and w- working with the lighting crew. Um Obviously that didn't work out. Uh, yeah. But before that, when we were doing the loner stuff, um, yeah, I bring all my tchotchkes with me and I, I wish I could just show you my house. Maybe we'll do another video with you guys. We'll have and to do I'll a tour at some house. point. Yeah. Cause Caroline Rose tour. It, this is, it's, I just moved in pretty recently, like the last th- like three weeks ago. And so it's still a little bit of a mess. I don't have my studio really set up yet. Um, but my house it's filled with, it's as weird as the live show. <laughs> and I always like collecting stuff, you know, we like, we'll, we'll go thrifting and find like a gumball machine and I'll fill it with like cow heads or something. <laughs> it, you know, I'm always like fi- kind of finding stuff. Yeah. I know we just talked about social media being poison, but I was going to say that'd be such a great like Instagram IGTV video thing where we just like the insides of Caroline Rose's house and like what she has. and Yeah. Yeah. I, I have been on the, uh, on social media a little bit, but I really try and not let it dictate my life. Totally. I try and limit it as much as I possibly but can. But I would give you I would give you guys a tour for sure. Perfect. That sounds great. Uh, <laughs> what's your like, fa- if you're on the road and you're like, let's go look at some thrift shops or let's go look at some some tchotchkes, where do you like look at things? Where do you try and stop when you're on the road? Or is it just random? Do you just drive down the road and you're like, that place looks cool? I mean, it's usually when we have time, wherever we end up, it'll be like, oh, let's find a thrift store and see what they have. Um other times I'm a little, a little bit militant about when people bring things into the van. Like when we get a lot of free stuff, I'm like, don't take it. You cannot bring that into the van. It's like, no more koozies. We don't need any more koozies. You're not taking that t-shirt. Um, but when it comes to finding like a, I don't know, a pinata or something that changes everything, I'm like, okay, the more the merrier. Yeah. Well, I think that's way different than a, a koozie or a, a t-shirt. Like I think, you know, me with two roommates, we have a whole... I don't, I don't know how big it's like this big and it's just stuffed full of koozies to the point that they're spilling out over the top and we just keep getting them from different things and we're like we don't need these anymore why do we keep accruing them we never use them um so yeah i understand like not taking things like that but a gumball machine or a pinata <laughs> yeah it's of course sorts. you gotta yeah of course you gotta bring that with you oh uh, yeah yeah cool <laughs> uh, i think we got one more song to get to and this is a new one right uh, yeah. Soma? Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about it uh, before we get into it? 
Sure. Yeah. I don't even think my label knows that I put a new song on here. So hopefully that's it's what cool. I was, I was going to ask if this was a premiere or like if it's a new song. Yeah, so. I guess so. Whatever. Okay. I don't really. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I do what I want, but um, yeah, this song, I, so I wrote it somewhat recently. I'm, I've been doing a lot better in recent times, but when I wrote this, I was just, man, it's just been hard. This has been such a hard time. And I was thinking about, I was like, wouldn't it be great if you could just take a pill and forget all your problems? And I've had like a really rough breakup. I've just been dealing with like a really rough breakup. Um, and, and that was partly on my mind. Uh, like could, if you, if I could take a pill to just forget everything, kind of a like eternal sunshine style, like yeah. would I, would I do it to just relieve the pain and then it sort of turned morphed into um, if I could take anxiety, if like why don't I just take anxiety medication, and <laughs> and and then there there's all and then it kind of became this existential thing like because something's easier and faster is it better to do it that way if it brings you pain if it brings you solace sooner, um, and that really has been on my mind a lot. Cause I did go on antidepressants and like anti-anxiety medication, uh, for a little bit. And I mean, to be totally honest, it like nuked my sex drive. So I stopped taking it. Yeah. But, that's what I always hear. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then I started doing all this holistic stuff and it takes longer, but you know, the effects it's like, I'm facing my fears. I'm like, really, it's very uncomfortable. But yeah. I feel like the work that I'm doing, kind of facing a lot of these big fears that I've had since I was like a child, um, it it's really important because I'm improving my life. I'm not just like slapping a Band-Aid on a big gaping open wound in my, my life. Totally. And But sometimes, you know, I do think it is better to just, if you can just take a pill... <laughs> That or was going to be my question at the end of this. Yeah, like you know, I every t to each their own. Like, there's a time and a place for everything. So that's what the song is about. Cool. All right, I think we got a video of it. Let's roll it. Take a breath and count to ten. Little pill inside. My hand soothe this burning in my chest. Time to lay this all to rest. I've gotta let it go. I've gotta let it go. I know. I've gotta let it go. I Take 
brand new song called Soma from Caroline Rose, which I think that is the first time anybody's going to hear that one. I think that's yeah. Brand new, which I absolutely love. I initially had, you know, questions to ask, like, when can we expect to hear more and everything, but... Here you go. It <laughs> doesn't sound like there's many plans for that yet, uh, but always really exciting to hear new music from Caroline Rose. Uh, once again, thank you for uh, taking all this time to make all these amazing videos. I love the overdubs so much <laughs> <laughs> and the wigs and the props. Uh, it just really brings out your personality, which is uh, a big reason why I love all of your music and seeing you live so much. Uh, Aww, so thank thanks. you once again. Yeah, That's so and sweet. Hopefully we get to see each other again at some point and see you live uh, here in Seattle when this pandemic is over and uh, we can tour again. and Or you can tour again, not me. I'm not doing obviously but, <laughs> uh thank you once again for stopping in and it's a it's a pleasure to talk to you today oh it's my pleasure to do it thank you so much yeah of course this is caroline rose and it's live on kexp at home discover new music at listener powered kexp.org